So we got the truck warming up and we are headed up to Walla Walla, Washington to go pick up a low bed trailer. And uh, this time we are going to come home with it because I already bought it. And I bought it sight unseen, so hopefully uh, it's good. And I also paid a lot more for it than I wanted to pay. So hopefully it's good. But we're gonna head up there, go with that thing picked up and uh, see if I made a good choice or not. All right, so it is many hours later and we're up along the Columbia River, as you can see there. Uh, we're in Oregon right now, but on the other side of the water there, that is Washington that you're looking at. Uh, this trailer that we're going up to get um, was actually sent to me by a viewer. And uh, they, were, they were looking in some government auctions for some trucks and ran across this and sent it to me. And it is almost exactly what I've been looking for. I've, I've been very picky on what type of trailer I buy because I'm looking to do a very particular thing. And uh, as this whole truck conversion gets put together uh, over the next month, you'll see kind of why I've been so picky on the type and the specs of the trailer. Um, but this one fits pretty much all the marks I wanted except for air ride. This is a spring ride trailer. I would have preferred air, but I was willing to give on some of the specs or the others just to get a trailer and uh, in all reality that's probably the least important of all of them so the fact that it's spring ride isn't a big deal. Uh, I'm not going to draw this out a whole bunch of like to you know, make a whole 20 minute video in the very end finally show you the trailer. I hate people do that so uh, I'm going to have to throw it a little farther. I'm going to sleep in the truck here tonight then finish the trip in the morning and you'll get to see the trailer in like this quick. Here it is. This is my new, well, new to me, definitely not new, uh, Trailies 35 ton folding neck low bed trailer. It is a 1992, I believe. And this trailer checks off almost all of the boxes on my want list. And uh, it, it definitely checks off all the most important ones. The spring ride instead of air, really not that important in the grand scheme of things. And the only other one is that uh, this is a 96 inch wide trailer instead of 102. 102 uh, is max width, this one's six inches narrower, but uh, not a big deal. Now the things that are important are the length measurements of this trailer. This is where it gets kind of tricky and this was just the perfect match for what I need. This trailer from tip to tail is dead on 40 feet. So as a 40 foot trailer, uh, a lot of organs total length limits on some of its shortened roads uh, you're exempt from the length limits if your trailer is 40 feet or less which this is right to the limit of that and the other important one is from the kingpin right in there to the center of the rear axle back there this trailer is 37 feet and in a lot of the tighter mountain road areas of uh, northern california uh, like mendocino county humboldt county all that where my like main stomping grounds uh, 38 feet king pin rear axle is the legal limit so this trailer is just under that and then also in those areas where I'm going to need to be going a lot uh, they have a 65 foot overall length limit and this setup right here with how deep that king pin is in the neck and the length of the neck right there before the well uh, allows me to slide my fifth wheel up just enough and still have all the turning clearance under there that from uh, well Nose to tail, bumper to bumper, I am just under 65 feet as it sits right there. And that should spread my weights about right to where that fifth wheel is to my front axle for my drives. Meaning this trailer and truck setup are legal pretty much everywhere I need to go in Oregon and California. Uh, while still getting the maximum load space of deck back there. Um, it could not have worked out much better than that. Now, if you're wondering why I wanted a folding neck trailer instead of a removable gooseneck trailer, that's a very important feature as well, but um, that'll become a whole lot more important once this truck is done with its surgery here in a month. One part of that is that on a removable gooseneck trailer, right up in here, there's a leg that comes down and sits on that back cross member of the truck right here. And that's what holds the neck up on the back of the truck while you detach it from the trailer. And once this truck's done with its surgery, it's no longer going to have that cross member right there. That's all gonna be wide open between the frame rails up to about here-ish. And I mean, you could put a six by six across there to, for that leg to sit down on or weld a big piece across that leg so it spreads between the two frame rails, but 
then it doesn't tuck up as far and then you or you have a six by six you're dealing with all the time and and this one doesn't need anything the truck any truck can pull it you don't need any pad there for that leg to sit on anything like that and then the other thing with the whole any truck can pull this is this trailer is fully self-contained looks like rusty likes it it's got its own motor and its own hydraulics runs completely by itself you don't need a pto on the truck granted this is the truck that's going to pull it pretty much all the time but if this truck goes down or has problems i can rent any standard fifth wheel tractor and run this trailer with it which is again important as we're seeing with you know breakdowns can apparently last months and a truck like my rollback my other one you you can't replace that you can't rent something else out that can do that same job but with this trailer being fully self-contained with its own motor and hydraulics uh, any truck can hook to it and run it now it would be kind of nice if it was a bit beaver tailed off the back for like loading stuff up over the back of it but then you're kind of losing your flat load space and to keep that load space and have a beaver tail now you're over the 65 feet so I, i'll give up that gladly to have the uh, 65 foot limit there so enough talking about it let's uh let's fire it up and then lay the neck out and show you how like it works come back here get our key uh we're gonna need choke it's not cold nope we didn't need the choke Hey, the engine is in there. Uh, I got my mud flaps off the truck sitting right there. I pulled them off so I didn't hook them when I was turning. This trailer has its own mud flaps right here that hang from it to protect those hydraulic cylinders in there. So we come back here and we push and it stays. And you will see the feet come down. Then we stop once it starts to take some weight off the truck and now we'll pull the truck out from under it. Okay, now we come back over here to our valve, pull it out. Oh, hold on. We gotta open up our locks. we come over here and pull our valve out grab our rubber here Check that out. Uh, I'm parked right in this curve of the this belly right here, so it sits up in the front some, but normally that'll flatten out, and this will be one smooth ramp all the way up onto the trailer. Update, uh, if you're on kind of unlevel ground, just stick some blocks right there at the front of the deck to kind of counteract that hump. And you can see just a nice, smooth, easy ramp all the way on there. That's nice. You see the kingpin here is on a, a collar here, so you throw that piece of rubber under or a piece of cardboard or, or anything, and the kingpin sets on it and comes up. And it doesn't stick like up past the trailer, but then you have a super nice, easy load deck. And then as you can see, you can back a truck right on. Uh, the two back axles can sit right on the islands there. That's what they're Therefore, some call them islands, some call them bolsters, whatever. This is a very long truck and it fits. Then you would just come back over here, bring your neck up. Oh, room to spare, look at that. 
So it folds its neck up and then it lifts the trailer up in the air. And once that gets back up to fifth wheel hooking up height, you stop it and uh, hook your truck up. There you go. And then we could come back over here. Shut it down. Look at that. That is the reason for this trailer right here. I wish I would have parked it in a better spot where it didn't have that hump right there in the scissor neck because of this angle because then it'd look a lot better but there you go that is why i wanted this specific trailer there's a lot of the low bed ones out there uh, that have a big belly to them and then uh, i'd have to make some sort of ramp or something to get a truck up onto the back end which is fine with the truck but if you have like an rv or a bus or something like that that has a long tail on it you'd be fighting hitting that with that lower belly to it. And then uh, a removable gooseneck, like I said, one is not gonna work very easy with this truck once it gets things done to it here in a month. And uh, two, um, the gooseneck is in the fifth wheel of the truck when you're ready to load and unload. And if you need to use the truck to go get something and bring it over and get it onto the trailer, you can't because the gooseneck is stuck in your fifth wheel. Like I needed to back another trailer on there, something like that. The gooseneck that I need to remove and able to load is stuck in the fifth wheel, so I can't use the fifth wheel to do other things. So that is why I wanted this setup right here. And that makes me happy to see, one, that that super long truck fit, meaning pretty much any other truck will fit. Uh, height will be the only issue. That right there is no problem. That antenna, I just like bungee cord that antenna down. A tall sleeper truck, obviously not, but that you would just tow instead of haul. But this can haul equipment, vehicles, trucks, all kinds of stuff. And I can hook literally any truck to it and do it. Uh, and it can also go pretty much anywhere I need to go. In the, the length restricted 65 foot zones of Oregon that we have up here to the northeast and over on the coast, as well as down Mendocino, Humboldt County in California. Um, good to go. Legal everywhere I need to be legal. So that's uh, that was like the perfect spec of trailer to find. Thank you, lady whose name I forget that sent that to me. Sorry, I don't remember, but thank you. I guess we can look under now. You see those cylinders push uh, on this outer portion of the scissor from back there. So when they lift, they just fold this neck right up. And then once it's up, they lift the trailer. All you do now is you flip your locks in place and uh, hook your truck back up to it, tie your stuff down and you're ready to go. The more I'm looking at it here, the more I'm thinking I might build some little um, like tire chalk stops right there at the back so I can bump into them and know I'm at the back. But um, that works out so freaking perfect. And I know the comment I'm gonna get, so I'm gonna answer it right now. Uh, my rollback is a also a setback axle truck like this, meaning it's got that overhang in the front. It's a four inch longer wheelbase than this truck. So yes, my rollback will fit on this trailer if I need to go load it up and haul it out of there. I mean, it'd have just a little more, uh, the bed overhang off the back, but that's what flags are for and good to go, but it'll fit. So that is the new trailer. Um, I didn't film any of the getting it and uh, driving back and all that stuff because uh, like I said before, I don't wanna drag everything out to the very end of the video and I know you'd wanna see how it worked and I didn't wanna fold the neck down and fold it back up out states away and all that stuff because just my luck, that's when the engine would blow and I'd be stuck with the neck on the ground or something stupid like that. So I wanted to get it home first. It tows nice, brakes work good, all the lights work, hydraulics work great, everything is what I was hoping it would be, which means yes, my uh, $27,000 gamble on an auction site I'd never heard of before with a trailer I'd never seen before, luckily did pay off. A little more than I wanted to spend, but for the specs to be so perfect as far as the lengths, which are the important ones, uh, I think it's worth it. And also not having the belly in the middle, I don't think I've seen another one quite like this. So 
good bit of money but worth it so that's gonna be it for this one um i just did a whole lot of driving for a couple days and sleeping in a truck so i'm gonna go in the house get a nap maybe get some more rusty pets and uh we'll see you guys next time thanks for watching